guys, welcome again sa ITS Information Technology Skills. Based from sa title natin, I think nandito ka because gagawa ka ng SRS or Software Requirement Specification and you don't know how to start. So, kung hindi mo alam kung saan ka magsisimula, of course, you have this question where saan ka nga ba magsisimula, how to start, who to talk with, what are you going to ask, when to start, and why do I need to write those information. So, worry no more guys because sa topic na to, didiscuss natin yung mga requirement analysis or the steps in requirement analysis. If we say requirement analysis, it is a process used to determine the needs and expectations of a new software or software to modify. It is also called as requirement engineering. So, here are the requirement analysis processes. The first step is to identify the stakeholder and the end user. So, sino nga ba yung mga stakeholder na kailangan natin i-identify? So, if we say stakeholder, guys, these are the individuals na maapektuhan or kabilang dun sa paggawa mo ng system or software. So, sino nga ba yung mga kabilang in software development? First is, of course, the system owner. Kung sino yung nagmamayari ng software. The next is the system analyst. Of course, it's the project team or yung mga members na gagawa ng software. So, for the system owner, guys, this is the sponsor kasi ng software. Siya yung magpa-fund para magawa yung software. Then, the system analyst, kung sino yung mag-analyze ng software. The project team, of course, the group of programmers para magbuo yung software. Then, of course, para dun sa software, hindi mawawala is the end user. Sino nga ba yung end user na binabangkait natin? Basically, end user are the system user. Ang mga softwares kasi natin, it owns by a person, pero kung minsan, iba ang gumagamit. An example of that is yung mga e-commerce site natin. Okay? Ang nagmamayari nun is, of course, yung may-ari ng business, pero ang gumagamit, or the end user or the customer para makabili sila ng product dun sa site na yun. Okay? So, after identifying the stakeholder and the end user ng software na gusto mong i-develop, you need to capture the requirements. How to capture those requirements? First is to have an interview. Pwedeng one-to-one -one interview. Basically, ginagawa tong one-to-one -one interview sa mga system owner. Kung meron ka mga katanungan doon regarding doon sa mga process nila doon sa business. The next is a group interview. Okay, so ginagawa naman to guys kapag yung data pwede nating makuha sa mga maraming tao or different individuals. Okay, so let's say magtatanong ka kung paano yung mga preference, mga customer na bumibili online. So pwede tayong gumawa ng group interview with different individuals. Another is use case. Okay? So, we can use use case. So, what is a use case? A use case is a quick overview of the system. Kung paano magraran yung system, papakita natin yun dun kay system owner. Okay? So, another is to have a prototype. A prototype is to show simple system para makita ni system owner kung ano yung interface, sample functions nung system na gusto niyang ipagawa. So, after getting or capturing the requirements or data from different individuals, you need to categorize those requirements. Okay? So, first is the functional requirement. These are the functions that the product is required to perform. Okay? So, I have a different video about the functional requirement and non-functional requirements. Lalagay ko na lang yun sa taas ng screen nyo or sa my description box yung link para mapanood nyo. So, an example of functional requirement is sending a verification message after registering to the new system. Okay? So, that is a functional requirement kasi sinasabi natin na ito dapat yung gawin ng software kapag meron tayong bagong client na mag-register. The next category is the technical requirement. Technical issues to be considered for the successful implementation of the product. For the technical requirements, guys, ito ni mga technical parts para maganda or successful yung pagkaka 
pag-implement or pagkaka-install ng product. So, let's have an example of technical requirement. Need to use minimum of 1 terabyte memory to store data. Okay? So, sinasabi natin na, ah, yung system dapat, um, minimum niya is 1 terabyte. Okay? So, that is an example of technical requirement. Another category is the transitional requirements. Steps required to implement a new system smoothly. So, from the word transition. Okay? So, paano nga ba natin ipapasa yung software dun sa may are? Okay? So, an example of that is the testing plan for the new system. Okay? Before, the, before implementing a new system, we need to test first. The next is the operational requirement, operations to be carried out in the back end for the proper functioning of the product. Okay, so from the word operation, paano gagamitin ng maayos yung software? An example of that is clicking a button to perform an action. Okay, so after categorizing the requirements, we need to interpret and record those requirements. Okay, so how to interpret? First is to define the requirement precisely. The next is prioritize requirements. For the prioritize requirements, of course, you need to identify the most critical to nice to have requirements. Okay? So, for the most critical, ito talaga yung kailangan ng software. For the nice to have, of course, from the word nice to have, ah, oh, maganda no, meron yan, pero hindi siya mandatory. Then next, carry out an impact analysis. Of course, we need to analyze those requirements ko ano yung mga kailangan pa nung requirements na yun. The next is resolve conflicts. To resolve conflicts, of course, we need to have a communication with the different stakeholders. Okay, another is analyze feasibility. Perform a detailed analysis of the product based on the requirements gathered to determine its reliability and to identify any major problems. After recording the requirements, of course, the sign off. If we say sign off, ensures that you get a signed agreement from the key stakeholders. Okay, so the key stakeholder is the system owner. This is done to ensure that there are no changes or no uncontrolled growth in the scope of the project. Okay? So, kung minsan kasi, kapag yung mga stakeholders natin, biglang may naisip, biglang itatawag na lang yun sa mga project team, then, oh, gusto ko ganito, sana, bigla ko lang naisip, sana maganda yung ganito. Hindi kasi bigla-biglaan yung changes, okay? So, we need to have a sign off an agreement to control the changes. So, those are the steps in requirement analysis. Kung nakatulong tong video na to, don't forget to like. And kung gusto mo pang matuto about computer programming and other computer stuff, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more tutorial videos. Bye!